Hello, this is Jake with Golden Fox Farms. I spent the last two weeks of July 2024 up at Mike Palmer's in Vermont. I recorded a bunch of content while I was there, and now's the time to start sharing some of it. The first thing I want to look at is the queen catch in Mike's queen rearing operation. Mike is a storied queen breeder operating in northern Vermont for more than 50 years. Mike produces uh, Carniolian queens in one mammoth yard populated by a number of hives. These hives can be divided into three different types. A handful of these are the breeder stock. These are the colonies with his best queens that he preferentially grafts from, and they're a very small minority. They represent three or four colonies out of 1,400 or so colonies that Mike operates, or whatever the number is to this day. Now, about half the bees in this apiary are in brood factories. These are used to keep his builders stocked full of young bees. He'll raid these for combs of emerging brood to stock his builders. Now, lastly are the builders, and these are these massive seven, eight box tall hives, and they are operated on a several week long cycle. It is within these builder colonies that the queen cells are allowed to mature, and they're picked on day 15 to be placed in mating colonies. Now, this is the mating yard where the actual queen mating takes place. This yard is surrounded by several of Mike's production colony yards, so he has his own drones mating with these queens, so he has control over what he's producing. Now, on a two-week interval, the colonies are inspected, mated queens caged for retail, and the colony reset with a mature cell. Now, there are several clusters of mating colonies in this mating yard, and they're ran on a staggered schedule allowing for multiple harvests during a two-week period. That way, not all the colonies need their queens collected at the same time. It fragments the work. Now, the queen catch is a team effort. Here we have five of us digging for queens. Uh, we also have a runner, so the queen catchers can stay at the boxes at work. Now, the actual marking and caging is done by our seventh, in this instance, Kate. This is a job Mike would normally do, but his broken wrist left him pretty handicapped for caging and marking queens. Here, Kate is marking the queens using a small dot of green paint from a model paint tin. She is also caging the queens going out for retail and packing in nurse bees. We occasionally bump nurse bees off a frame onto the inverted lid she is using. The field bees would fly back, the nurse bees stick around, and she can pick attendants for the cages as she goes, nine to a cage. These queens will be packaged and shipped to beekeepers throughout the nation, including a few famous names. Now, not all found queens are headed to retail. Some were marked and returned. Being July, late July, this was the last queen pick, and some of these queens were needed to head these hives into winter. Earlier in the season, 80% of mating colonies would have had a good queen for retail. In the July heat, mating success wanes, so we're closer to a 60 or 65% take. This is one of Mike's mating colonies. These are half-frame units. Half of them are 10-frame wide type boxes that are split into four mating chambers, while half of them are a pair of five-frame-ish sized units uh, that are split into two chambers each. So each one of these sets has four mating chambers in them. Uh, now these mating colonies are using true division board feeders. The feeders not only partition the boxes, but are also internally split, preventing the travel of bees between mating chambers. Now, again, we're at the end of July, and this is the last queen pick, so we're doing things a little different. Instead of adding a queen cell after finding the queen, we would consolidate the mating colony chambers to where instead of having four chambers in a set, it would have two, and we would return queens to half of those. These would then be stacked to give one queen per side with 10 frames worth of space to prepare for wintering. And later, these hives will be moved to wintering yards. Now, that's about all for this video. If you liked it, share and subscribe. And until next time, I'll say good luck and happy beaking.